In this video, we will show you how to run a back of the envelope analysis for an apartment property development scenario. On the left hand side here, we have a listing for a property currently on the market, a 4.4 acre site listed for $5.5 million. On the right hand side, we have our browser with Valuate loaded, and I'm going to sign in here. And to pull up a new Valuate analysis, I will do File, New, B-O-T-E. And under Type, I will select Apartment Building Development. Now I have the choice of running the analysis either on an FAR basis or a units basis. FAR is a constraint as it relates to density of gross square footage of the building on top of the site. In this instance, we will use the units-based method, and at the end of the video, we will show you how you can toggle between the units-based approach and the FAR-based approach. I'll fill in some preliminary information now. I'll put in the asking price for the land. 4.4 acres, 265 units, which is roughly 60 units an acre, 25,000 square feet of retail, an average unit size of 800 square feet, 1.2 parking spaces per residential unit. I'll leave the senior construction loan, loan to cost ratio at 65% and the interest rate at 5%, and I'll put in a two year construction duration. and I'll click the Submit button. I'm going to minimize the listing and I'll bring this into the middle here. And now what we see are two columns and we'll start in the left-hand column. At the very top, we see we have the $5.5 million land purchase price as well as its per residential unit equivalent of $20,755 per unit. Certain inputs are already pre-filled because we entered that information on the new file screen. So 4.4 acres, 265 units, 800 rentable square feet per unit, 25,000 square feet of retail. And we have inputs now for the building timeline that we need to fill in more completely. So for the pre-construction period, I'll put in 12 months, which means that I think it'll take a year to get us to building permits. The construction duration for the moment, I'll leave it 24 months. And I will assume that I can lease up after construction is complete at 15 units a month or an 18 month post-construction lease up period for a total timeline of 54 months. On a preliminary basis, I will put in $125,000 in hard costs per residential unit for $33.125 million. And 35% of hard costs for the soft costs, which brings us to 11.6 million. And I'll leave, for the moment, this cost of funds at 5%. And we'll see here that our land price is already pre-populated and is roughly 10% of your total project cost. And this totals to $53.9 million, or roughly $200,000 per unit. Those are the uses of funds, or the total project cost, or total development cost. And the sources of funds are the 65% loan to cost from the senior construction loan, and a residual equity amount of $18.8 .8 million, or 35% of the total development cost. Next, I'll move up to the project cash flows, and I'll input my income and expense assumptions. I will use an average rent of $2 a foot, average monthly parking rent of $50 per space per month, vacancy and credit loss of 7%, and operating expenses per unit per month of $500, and real estate taxes per unit per month of $100. Assuming that we have a retail component, which we said we did, 25,000 square feet, let's put in a rent of $35 per square foot per year on a triple net basis. 
And this gets us to a stabilized NOI, assuming this 7% vacancy and credit loss and 0% vacancy on the retail of $3.9 million or a 7.19% yield on cost. And so this is typically where most people will stop in terms of running a back of the envelope analysis. They will solve for this going in stabilized yield on cost. The beauty of Valuate's back of the envelope calculator is that now we can manipulate the land purchase price on a back solving basis simply by entering in any targeted yield on cost. So for instance, let's say I needed to underwrite to an 8% going in yield on cost. Well, all I have to do is simply click on the field for the cap rate, which was computed and given to me, and override that value. So I can simply type in eight and hit tab. And when I do that, we'll see the land price is naturally going to go down because all of the other inputs are going to be held constant. So what we've seen happen here is given that all of the other inputs were held constant and we were solving for a higher yield than what was originally computed, the land price had to come down. And in this case, it came down to less than half a million dollars. And so the land is perhaps overpriced given that most developers typically like to underwrite to an 8% going in cap rate. Now, we weren't told anything about the hard costs or the other costs in terms of the budget. We can now manipulate all of those inputs in an interactive manner to solve for what we think might be the residual land value. And so let's say it doesn't take us $125,000 per unit to build, but we could do it for 100,000 per unit. Well, in that case, holding the land price constant at 433000 now we've underwritten to a going in cap rate of almost 10%. And so again, the beauty of using Valuate's calculator is now I can again back solve to the land price that will give us any targeted yield on cost. And so I put the 8 in again and hit tab, and now it's going to tell me that, well, actually this land on that basis, if I could build it for significantly less than I thought, the land is perhaps worth $9 million. And so we can continue this process over and over again, manipulating cost inputs and rent inputs and operating expense inputs to converge on what we think is the value of the land. Well, let's just go ahead and put it back to the asking price for the moment. And that'll get us to an eight and three quarter cap rate. And let's assume that we believe in all of our inputs for the moment. We actually take the analysis one step further. So we say, all right, let's not just solve for the going in cap rate. Let's also see if we were to do a merchant build scenario where we sell the stabilized asset to a buyer of newly constructed stabilized properties, what would we be able to sell it for upon stabilization? And so we can put in some growth rates for the inflation on the income side and the inflation on the expense side. And given our timeline that we had inputted, right, it's actually going to take us from today five years to this point of stabilization. And so we apply those growth rates over that entire five year timeline. And in order to solve responsibly for a valuation, we'll put in an annual capital expenditures assumption of $300 per unit per year, which amount will be grown by this expense inflation rate of 3%. And so what we see when we grow this current stabilized NOI of 3.8 million at these rates over five years, we get to a future stabilized amount of $4.5 million. And that's a yield on cost of a little over 10.2%. And now we can apply an exit cap rate to that future stabilized NOI. And so let's say we can sell it at seven and a half cap rate. That's gonna tell us that we could sell the property given all of these assumptions for roughly $60 million or 228,000 per apartment. And so we built it for 44 million and we sell it at a 7.5 cap for 60 million. 
and naturally we'll have some selling costs associated with that and then we can see our net sales proceeds the profit on sale and the profit margin and also our multiple on equity and so if we believe that these numbers are all accurate we've essentially doubled our money on the equity side in five years building an apartment property leasing it up to the point of stabilization another terrific feature of valuates back of the envelope calculator for apartment building development is that we actually include sensitivity analysis tables and what these do is these show the spectrum of outputs for profit margin again assuming that we sell this newly stabilized property upon stabilization given different inputs for the rent and the cap rate and different inputs on the hard cost side and the cost of the construction debt so let's look at the top one as an example and so across the top here we have average monthly rent and so let's go ahead in this input field in the middle and put in our base case which is two dollars per square foot and so I'll put in two dollars here and then let's vary that by let's say 10 cents a foot so 0 0.1 and we'll see now that this shows two dollars and ten cents a foot in the column immediately to the right and to the column to the right of that one 220 a foot and then it goes down on the left hand side 190 180 and then our base case exit cap rate an asset sale cap rate which is blended across both the residential and retail cash flow streams is seven and a half percent and so now we can vary that cap rate by let's say 0 0.25 percent and so the cap rate as we go down the column rises and as we go up the column from the middle position it will fall and what we see at the intersection of each of these inputs is the profit margin given the use of each of those headers simultaneously so for instance our current base case is two dollars a foot exiting at seven and a half and that gives us a profit margin of 23%, which is what we see here in the model currently. If rents were to be $2.10 a foot and we kept the exit cap rate constant at 7.5, then our profit margin would be 28%. And we can do this analysis however many times we would like and, and manipulate these inputs in whatever increments we want. One of the very helpful features of our back of the envelope calculator is that we have tool tips which tie to each of the individual line items that describe and define each of those items. So if you're not familiar with some of these labels, you can simply hover your mouse over any one of them and it will define that term for you. Additionally, you are able to toggle between the basis of the analysis being either units based which is the currently selected one shown in orange or FAR based and it will retain the inputs that are common to the two and allow you to make inputs for the alternate approach that you have not yet populated so for instance this analysis is complete and it's units based if I want to apply all of these common inputs to FAR based I simply click FAR based and now I'll have a few inputs up at the top here that need to be filled in and so let's go ahead here under the lot square footage and put in the equivalent of the 4.4 acres and let's say that this allows for density of 1.5 FAR which is 1.5 times the lot area of gross building on top of that lot and let's put in an average unit size again of 800 rentable square feet and now we have this entire analysis running on this other basis and I can toggle between the two again to run an apartment development back of the envelope analysis on value 8 go to file new BOTE